I think that as I go on with this, uh, it's ever fresh every day. And I was thinking, you know, what we're going to do today, and I thought, I don't have to plan, I don't have to think of it. I, I go to the nothing, you see, and that's my refuge, and I see what, what happens, really. I mean, I've done thousands of workshops, so it's not, you know, I've got the, the tools at my fingertips, but uh, the joy uh, is to have this nothingness, which is so wise and adventurous, you see. So, but it, you know, if you're only what you look like, you're very limited. Your options are limited. You, know, you don't know very much. But when you awake to this nothingness where you are, you realize, wow, what is it going to come up with next? You know? And this is a life of adventure, and your life opens. Often when people grow older, their life narrows. But when you have this at your center and you're aware of it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's full of strange paradoxes. <laughs> yes. What do you mean by nothingness? What is your meaning when you say nothingness? I mean, uh, you see, uh, you notice you cannot see your face. Right? Mm. That's it. <laughs> Let's all do that. We just point back at where others see our face, you see. And this is a non-verbal experience, and you're pointing at a place where you do not see your face. I don't see my face. So, uh, this is non-verbal. So, you've got it. I mean, you can't not get it. Uh, I say, I'm now pointing at nothingness. But you can call it what you like. It's, it's self-aware, obviously. Yes. I feel very hesitant to speak in this space because it's like everybody should get it. And do you think I do you not know? get it and I don't see, but I sense that there is something. I don't feel nothingness. Yes. I don't feel nothingness. No, I don't feel nothingness, you see. This is a very good point, you see. Uh, people say, I don't get it. I think what they mean is I don't feel something, uh, or I don't understand it, or it doesn't do anything for me, you see, which, which I understand. Sometimes it really doesn't do anything for me. And uh, we'll go into the sensations in a minute, but uh, I think it's very important to make clear that this is, a, a, in a way, a completely neutral experience. You just can't see your head. Hang on a minute. Uh, and uh, you're looking out of one opening uh, and it's a matter of being quite simple and taking it as it's given. Uh, now, I suppose if it doesn't mean anything to you, you're not going to go on with it, um, probably. So part of uh, my job here is to show some ways in which it means something, how it can, how you can apply it, what benefit it can give you. You see, it's just talked about one really. That you know, this, <coughs> this nothingness that I'm pointing at, I say, isn't just nothing. It's awake, self-aware, and full. All of this workshop, and. Uh, <coughs> I say it's just uh, incredibly smart. <laughs> I am so smart. I mean, who I really am. So. Yes. What were you going to say? Um, I'm just. Uh, it connects to sharing what happened yesterday and to what you. What's your name? Mir. Yeah. Mir. What Mir said is that um, I actually was able to feel it. Uh, when we, when you started to talk about how we were as children and the evolution yeah. of us as human beings, and uh, I saw that we're so conditioned in terms of who we are when we are adults that we don't even sometimes give the space of even feeling how open we can be. Yeah. 
Um, so when I realized that, I said, okay, I'll play with you. Yeah. Because you, you invite us, okay, play with it. Yeah. And I said, okay, I'll play with it with a feeling that everything is possible, that I can do this exercise, that I can enter into it, that I can feel it, that I can sense it. And then I was able to see the the openness that everything that things are actually you can be very open to be other things and to be you know to accept new things and uh, that's it so I think this is I think we'll 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 go around this question all day yeah. and uh, hopefully you'll you'll find something that it helps you with the question there. Yeah, because it's not that I don't want to no. to feel, and it's not that I haven't felt in some um, instances yes. all these feelings. Yes. But like your method it, it is uh, supposedly uh, you can get it on demand. Like you do the movement, you do yes. the play, and you reach it. And the, when I felt it, it, it was that it suddenly appeared out of <laughs> something. So I, I would really much like to, but <laughs> and this is why I came today also. Yeah. But yes. I, I, you know, what I'm sharing doesn't sound very um, spiritual or something. Uh, notice you cannot see your head. Instead, you see the room. Mm -hmm. now, you, now, that... Even if, though you've got sensations and everything, you've got that, right? I mean, you, so you see, uh, that is, just notice now, I mean, bring your hands out in front of you, you see, and you see a space between your hands, and bring them back towards you, and you see they get bigger and bigger, and then they're on either side of the room, and then they disappear and disappear. I say they disappear into nothingness, space, awareness, clarity, stillness. And then you bring them forwards, and they come magically out of that place. Or put your hands like this. Now they're huge, like giant's hands. And uh, they're on either side of the view, or either side of the room. And between them, you don't see your face, you see the world. See, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, incredibly simple. Now that's not a feeling. Not even a feeling of surrender. It's just, it is so deceptive. Because it's so <coughs> neutral. But that's why it's always available. If it was a feeling of surrender or a, a kind of understanding or realization, you would not be able to get it all the time. Or you might get it once and then spend the rest of your life going looking for it. You see, and uh, people do that. They have a big experience in meditation or not, and then they spend the rest of their lives looking for it and don't find it. You won't find it. Nothing happens twice. But the neutral experience that you cannot see your head, instead you see the world. When you look at me, you see Richard's face and not Mir's, right? That's it, you see. But don't go too quickly into thinking about it. Just be with it in that non-verbal way. Like a baby, pre-verbal. You see, I know we're not babies, so we're not trying to get back to being a baby. But it, it, it's in that non-verbal way. This is this is uh, it's such a relief not to have to think about it or to have to maintain a kind of realization. If I may, yes, uh, the hands are disappearing. Yes, but I can still feel them in the back. I don't feel this. All right, back, so let's go. Void nothingness. <laughs> And all these no, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, place your everybody. We do it. Play, your hands disappear. Place your hand on the back of your head. You know, just one hand is enough. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got sensation there, right? Now you say your hand is on the back of your head. So there it is. But on present evidence, you can't see your hand. Now on present evidence, this point. What color is that sensation? What, touching or seeing? <laughs> what colour is it? Well, you can't see it, so you can't say what colour it is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, really, you've got... You, it, it's very deceptive because you think you know how large that sensation is. It's only that... Right. But actually, on present evidence, how can you say how... how I mean, it could be as wide as a room, couldn't it? Yeah. 
If you're a baby, that's the point of bringing up the baby is because it's pre-verbal. So it helps you get back to just paying attention to how it's given. Now if you're a baby and you place your hand on the back of the baby's head, that sensation isn't on your head, it's, an, it's a sensation hanging in nowhere. Because you have not yet gone outside yourself and looked back and imagined your head. It's just, you see. So, I mean, place both hands on top. They both disappear. That's just a sensation sort of floating. I don't know where, you know. But seeing it on other people, yes. you can see. So it Now what you're doing, what you're no, yeah, that's secondary, you see. That's the point. Mm. I'm not denying that from outside we can all see your hands on your head. That's really important for you to know, obviously, for a thousand reasons. But I'm distinguishing between what you look like to us, and you can imagine that, and what you actually see there. And relativity says what we see is going to be different from what you see. And that's taking it uh, seriously. We haven't caught up with science. Science, you know, we think, uh, you know, you, we understand that if the observer comes up to you, you get uh, just half a person and then a patch of skin and cells and molecules and like an onion, almost nothing. Right? We understand that. And then we, then we drop it and say, but here I'm a person. No, you're not. You're a person out there. <laughs> it's, it's so radical, you see. So I take seriously the fact that if you come up to me, you, you find I disappear and I come all the way here and I've gone completely. But in this gone, in this emptiness, is you. You see, now that's very different from the outside view. <laughs> we will do an experiment. You're a hard nut to crack. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to add something. Oh yeah, sorry, I'll let yeah. yeah. What was the question on the first, About ne ne neutrality. Ne what? Neutrality. Neutrality, yes. yes. Because uh, this neutrality that you talk about, yes. my experience is during the exercises and after that, and many times it's like there is a sense very uh, deep and very soft and very always there. Of being, yes, and it's very quiet. And yes, it's very sen sensuous, I would say. Yes, and it's there, so it's neutral. It's not well, neutral. You, you see what I mean? I, I mean just I to see without the sense of being. The sense of being gives the feeling of security, real, a real security, because it's everywhere. It's only that, and we feel it when you have. Uh, eyes closed because you don't see, we don't see the gross things of objects. Yes. So it's neutral. It's not neutral because you talk many times about the neutrality. Yes. What do I mean all that? And the sense of being is always there. I know. I, yeah. I'm absolutely agree with you. You see, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying in this context is that the basic experience is non-verbal. And now we can, for the sake of communication, put lots of words on it. Yeah. And that's really important. Okay. So, uh, but as soon as you say one thing about it, the opposite is usually true. <laughs> See? So, uh, but the fact is, we've got the experience. You can't not get it. Because it's, it's, you can't see your head, instead you see the world. It's one way of putting it. Yeah. And that frees us to think about it in a thousand ways. So I understand. You, you, on one hand, you say it's neutral. And the next person said, but it's being. You see, which is so positive. I say, yes. It's, <coughs> it's sensuous. Yes, but you it's see, silence, you see, you're expressing it in your way. Yeah. Which is great, you see. But that would be different for someone else, which is great. Mm -hmm. So uh, my job here is to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, right? And then someone says, but I don't feel what Arlette's saying, you see. It's, that's quite possible. And I say, yes, I get it. <laughs> right? But the, there is this phrase that uh, awakened people see, live in the same world. And people who are not 
uh, exp uh, discovering these realities, they live in a di different world. So it yeah. is the same world. So what is it about? Well, it we can debate that, you see, but let's, <laughs> let's stick with the experience. And leave that to the philosophers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, like to for me, it's not philosophy. It's no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a simply. Yeah, okay. I, I'm absolutely with you. I, I, yeah. you know, I'm a okay. bit playful, so you know, yeah. I say that. Yeah. So I absolutely take on board what you say. Yes. Yes. Thank you. When we are simple and quiet, and we are coming from the sameness. For me, I have a strong feeling of connectivity, of a real flow between us, which is not sensed when, when we are from the personality, acting for the self. Can you address it more? Can you can, can we work on it today? It's my invitation to. Can, can, we, can we pay attention to this uh, real flow between us when we are the same, when we are from, yeah. the, from the one? You see, my, my approach is to stick with attention to this, and then we see how it affects it. Mm. Uh, so we're not going to go... So that may come up, and I understand what you're talking about. But it may not come up for everyone. And we're not going to just go for that. So we, we stay underneath it and we see what grows out of it for everyone. Yeah? yeah. But I mean, uh, you only have to see that you're, you're open here and you see everyone is in you. Now that is, I'm in you and you're in me. Right? I have your head, you have mine. It, it is uh, this. That is flow. Now that is the way it's given. You don't have to manufacture that. You just, you see, from the outside, it's head to head, like you were doing yesterday. It's head to head. And there's a separation. And, and, but when you see uh, your own point of view now, and that your hands disappear into space, and when you look at others, you have their face instead of yours. This is, I'm in you, and you're in me. This is, uh, this is, this is communication. This is uh, non-verbal communication, you see. And I, and I say, you see, uh, I am nothing here. But you are receiving my human appearance now out there. So I say, I am communicating to you. I'm broadcasting my human appearance and you're picking it up, right? And you're broadcasting, you can't see your face there, but it's appearing here in me. So you're transmitting your appearance now to me. I've got it. This is communication. I am in you and you in me. It's communication. This is already happening. And uh, uh, we're uh, becoming conscious that I am in you and you are in me. It's fantastic. Fantastic. All right, so, uh, if you um, hold your uh, arm out, and just make it comfortable, and look at the mirror and notice your you know you can see your body your headless body you don't see your head and you see your arm coming down out of this space here and your so which end of your arm is your face <laughs> so the far end isn't it I mean where do you see it and there's your appearance at the far end true Mm -hmm. Sorry, you understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, when you look at the... You, you've got the hole in the mirror down there, right? Ah, okay. okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Technical detail there. Yeah. Uh, down? You look yeah. at your complexion and you see only your hand coming from your shoulder and you don't see your face. So That's right. So you have to hold it like this. Yes, you've got to hold it with the mirror there and uh, you look down your head, you know, from... You know, you understand the language now. Your headless body, right? You don't see your head. You see a bit of your nose, you've got sensation, but you don't see your head. And it's just very uh, graphic to hold your, the mirror out and look down your arm and see your face there and uh, acknowledge that your face is at the far end of your arm. <laughs> and it's not at the near end. 
And look at the near end, this is wide open, you don't see an appearance here. And it's the contrast between that little face out there that you identify with, of course, and at the near end, this wide open space. This is seeing, you see, it's just a simple observation. If you've done it yesterday, I wouldn't understand it better. This thing. You, it, good, we did it today, you mean? <laughs> no, yesterday. If you had done it yesterday, I would understand the whole workshop better. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I mean, this is it. This is the experience. This is a headless experience. Yeah. Well, it's a good job you came today, then. <laughs> look on the bright side. Always <laughs> look on the bright side. <laughs> He's coming here. Yeah. John Keyes, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, here's an idea, you see, that uh, your mirror is showing you two truths. And the first one is what you look like on Saturday morning. <laughs> Bright, fresh, never looked better. Right? <laughs> All right, that's the first one, is what you look like. Second one is where that face is. And if you were to ask a very young child, say, Where's your face? Oh, it's there. <laughs> See, point at it, point at your face. See, that's where it is. Now point back at the place you're looking out of. And there's nothing here like the face there in my experience. Wow. <laughs> yeah. True? True. What a contrast. Mm -hmm. That's tiny. See, it's a, it's a thing. But here, no thing. Now, this is, I suggest, the mirror showing you what you look like at this range, at arm's length, more or less, you see. And it's what you look like to others at that range. See, if I am standing in front of you about, you know, it looks about twice as far as around here, I can see your face. Now bring your mirror halfway towards you, you see, and it shows you what you look like at that closer range, which is, you know, bigger eye. And that's what someone would see at this range. Bring it right up to your eye, and that's what someone would see at that range. And bring it away. You see? And there's... It's showing you that your appearance changes with range. Now, if we had a big mirror and I put it up, you would see uh, your whole body, which is what I can see. You can't see your whole body with the background. True? Mm -hmm. But if I put a mirror in front of you, you'd be able to see it. You see, and you'd be able to see your hands behind your head and touching your head. If I had a mirror here, and the mirror is showing you what you look like at this range. Mm -hmm. And if I put a mirror in the sky, you would see Tel Aviv. Do you see what I mean? You know, big one up. And it's showing you at that range, you've got... That's what you look like. I mean, And if you put a mirror on the moon, a huge one, and looked in it, presumably you'd see the Earth reflected, right? Mm -hmm. It's showing you at that range, you have a planetary face, at this range, you've got a human face. You've got many layers. You know, at 20,000 feet, you've got an urban face. Or a very close, you've got a cellular appearance. Right? The face of yourself. And this is verifiable. And the mirror is, is showing you that your appearance isn't here at the center. It's somewhere out here where people, other people are picking you up. You've got my face there now, don't you? Yeah. Yes, you see, I don't. And I have to trust you, don't I? That's the game we did yesterday. I trust you to tell me what I look like. You see, because I can't see it. And you're trusting me to tell you what you look like. We exchange appearances, you see. So, uh, you see the contrast between this appearance or any of your appearances and what you are at zero. Now, uh, to really bring home what you are at zero, we now look at the hole in the card, and it's a you know oval hole with a, you know it's got boundary, and and you can fit a part of the room in it. 
only a little bit of the room. It could have nothing. Just try that. So hold it up and just see how you can fit a picture or a person or a bit of the floor. It, it says yes to everything. It doesn't refuse anything. Yeah? Now hold it at arm's length and look at it. And then a little bit up so you're not distracted by me. So slowly bring it towards you as if you're putting on a mask, you see. And watch how it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So more and more of the room is in that hole. And keep going, you see. And then the top and bottom disappear. The sides get very wide. Keep going. And you put it right on. And the boundary goes. And you brought your attention home to this boundless, edgeless space. And now the whole room is in that space. So let, we're going to do that again. And the idea is that you start paying attention at this range to the card. And as you bring the card on, your attention travels with the card until it comes to zero. And you see how different it is at zero from what it is at half a meter or something, you know. So it's very, very simple, you see. A child, child sees it. You just got to go by what you actually experience from your point of view. And as you put it on, it gets bigger and bigger. See, and huge, huge. It, it's bigger than, you know. It's wide, wide, and put it right on, and no boundary. It's very, it's sort of a relief in a way, isn't it? No boundary, you see. Just a wide open space. Now keep it on. And here's a very, uh, uh, here's an application of this. Because you look around and everyone else looks silly. <laughs> right? Look at them. Oh, they look silly. Now from your point of view, do you look silly? No. Because no. you can't see them, right? You don't look silly. But I see what you, what you look like, so I imagine myself. That's the imagination. That's the whole, that's exactly the point. That you sort of, you, you apply what you see here to you. Yeah. Yes, so you understand now that you're seeing yourself from outside, as it were, imagining yourself from outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we just distinguish now between what you imagine you look like to me, mm -hmm. which is really silly, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and what you are what you are for yourself, which you, you don't see anything, right? No. That's it, you see. We're not denying the outside view where you look silly, I look silly. But the inside view is that you don't, because you don't see anything here. Now this is very freeing, actually. You start to live from this, because it, it, you know, it's like being invisible. So that, gradually, as you stay with that, you see, I really keep, encourage you to keep it on, because, you know, just to... You know, it's a bit, you know, uncomfortable perhaps, because you're out there imagining what you look like, right? But that's the point, you see. Just be aware that that is imagination now. You need it. You need it to function. You need it to get around the world, you see. But right now, your direct experience is you do not see that. Now, if you start to take that seriously in your life, you see, and be conscious that you don't see yourself is a... You're invisible to yourself, if I can put it in that terms. That begins to free you to be yourself. Because what restricts us so much in our lives is worrying what people think. Mm -hmm. I can't do that because I'll be silly or I'll say the wrong thing or they may not like me. In that game, you know, we need, we saw yesterday, we need to belong. We want to be accepted, you see, it, by the others. And when you see this and you take it seriously, it begins to free you to, to take risks, to be yourself. To express instead of just try and impress. Mm. See. Mm. So, uh, one of the, I mean, it is a, such a powerful, restricting thing for people. So you can, you can take this off for a moment. So I have a friend, Sam, uh, you know, Sam, he plays the guitar, and uh, his normal experience, he's a very good guitarist, but when he's performing, he, he says he his fingers feel like sausages for the first one or two songs. He's self-conscious, he you know, it's a struggle, because he is feeling under inspection. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
you know, if, if people say, you know, the thing about public speaking, some people would rather die than stand up and give a talk. Because they feel looked at. They feel threatened, you see. Now, actually, when Sam saw this and took it seriously, uh, the first time, and this is, a, you know, unusual in a way, the first time he then played, in a, after about a third song, he, th he thought, there's something different here. So he realised he wasn't, he wasn't self-conscious. Now, of course, it comes back. It's not like it's gone completely. It comes... It's a very deep thing. But this is such a uh, therapeutic thing in your life. Now you've got to stick with it. You can say, oh, I tried that and it didn't work, so I gave it up. No, you, if you're not doing it now, you're not, it's not going to work now. You see, right now. Notice this open space. Now you're... Unlike the baby, you're conscious, others see you as a, a, your appearance, which is small. And you will go more into the mirror because that's how a, we get our face on, is partly through the mirror. But now just notice, you don't, for yourself, you don't have a face. You don't have a back. There's no wall behind you because it, you know, it's just wide open. Now start to live from that, yes. Now, what happens when um, you walk you walk at the street or with your family and you get remarks like uh, you're fat, you, your hair doesn't look good today, uh, your makeup is wrong? You forget about being uh, avoided. Yes. So that you see, I think uh, uh, this is where. Uh, it is an ongoing meditation. And the world is reflecting back to you 24-7, this one. Mm -hmm. And it always will. Just because you see your headless, but that won't stop. That keeps going. And uh, the, the thing to do is to find a way of using that to remind you of your void nature, mm -hmm. you see. So, for example... Uh, the normal feeling when you look at someone is to imagine your face. You feel looked at. That's what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel under inspection. You feel small. You you know you wonder is my makeup on or as you were saying. You see. So the normal when you look at me and I'm looking back at you, you feel looked at. Mm -hmm. So uh, you feel that I am. Um, uh, you know you can see yourself through my eyes, as they say. So as we grow up, other faces, um, uh, you know, are in the service of giving us our face. I look at you and I feel, I imagine, I, you know, I feel silly, I, you know. So now I say, okay, now when you look at other faces, get into the habit of attention. Not just the imagination, what they see, but attention. And when you look at me right now, you only see my face. So now, if you can get into the habit, it's like a little trigger. Every time you see a face, you say, ah, oh, remember no face. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now that... No face for me or no face for you? No face for you. For me. Yes. You see. So now whenever you look at anyone's face... It, you're, they're now reminding you of your no face. If you, you know, you get into the habit of it. You've got to put a bit of energy in, mm -hmm. you know, to get, it doesn't just automatically happen. You've got to, you know, when you look at someone else's face, you go, ah, oh, okay, that's a bit uncomfortable. They're looking at me. Now, where are they looking? Now, I'm looking, what's your name? Oh, hi. Yeah, so I'm looking at you, right? And you feel looked at. But in your own experience, where am I looking? For the void. Yes. So now, you see, you can... Oh, he's looking into the void here. You see. Oh, you're looking into the void. That's very freeing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, you see. I'm like, oh, he's looking into the void. Instead of, oh, you know, what's he thinking of me? That, you know, I'm under inspection. I'm probably judging. He doesn't like me, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Now you, you, all that's still going on, but now you take your own power back in a way. 
say, well, from my point of view, they're looking into nothing here. <laughs> or it's face to no face. So all what, all, everything that you see in me is your imagination? Well, from your point of view... From my point yes, of view? Okay. Yes. It's but, a story that you make. Yes, but it's life. Mm -hmm. So I am not <clears throat> undervaluing it. I accept it. But it, it does not actually give you a face, does it? No. That's it. So you've got to kind of distinguish between the imagination and all of that, which is all part of life, and that's the communication, mm -hmm. and your point of view, which is, I have no face here. I'm avoid. Yes. Uh, and no one else can do that for you. You see, you can't wait until people give you permission for that. You just go do it yourself. It will never happen. <laughs> what? It will never, no, it will never, never happen. happen. No, because yeah. everyone is, sees you, sees your face, you see. So I'm re I, my business, partly, is to reflect your face back to you. You see, that is life. I reflect back. But now we are coming to our senses, literally, paying attention to our direct experience, seeing that from your point of view, no appearance. Does it apply? Then, yeah. Sorry. I have a head question. <laughs> uh, don't you have opinion on yourself? Yes, well that is all part of that. It's part of the... Yes, yes, you see. So now you have to kind of... You, you, you've got an opinion on yourself. Now does that actually make you into a thing? Well, it makes me a thing. No, does it? Can you see a thing there? I'm saying if I'm looking on my leg, yes, I can have opinion on my leg. Is it myself, or it's like uh, something I got from there? Oh well, there's a thousand ways of putting that. That's the, the you, you know you can say well it it isn't me, but it is me. You can have both. You don't have to to come somehow get to some kind of understanding where you know for example. You don't identify. That happens, then it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter. It's but you said, for example, for the voice. So I hear myself. Yes. So I, I'm saying something, and suddenly I have an opinion of what I said. Yes. Maybe it's from the outside of what others will think, but also maybe I have a... I know, but where is that opinion coming from? I mean, where's your voice coming from when you speak now? It's come from the emptiness. Right? Yes. And doesn't the self-criticism come from the emptiness? Also. Yes. <laughs> Does it? It is. Yes. You see, so uh, uh, you won't stop the self-criticism. But you can see that it doesn't stick. Right? That's the freedom. The freedom isn't in stopping the self-criticism. You'll never do that. I don't think. I haven't managed it. You know. But I, but it, when the, this is when the self-criticism comes up, you see, that's when the, the seeing who you are becomes really valuable. You see, because you can't stop that coming up. I say, but you can see that it does not make you into a thing. You're still open. You're free. You see, even while this self-criticism is coming up, that is very powerful. It's humble. It's humble. Uh, this one I didn't get because um, maybe um, it's not all of you, but this self criticism and also the fact that um, other see see the appearance of you. Then when you do something strange or you do something funny or something, then they will experience it and they will react to it. Yeah. So. So how, how do you still feel free to do, unless you say, I don't care? No, <laughs> but, no. But it... uh, I'm saying this is, uh, this is attention. <coughs> Even though someone is criticizing you and reacting you to you and say negatively now, you see? Do you see your own head? No. So you're, this is a very important question. This is great. And this is really for working out and testing. But I say, that he, because it happens all the time, 
you know, I, I, 24 7 people giving feedback. And, you know, although, you know, it, well, I mean, some of it's not negative and some of it's positive, you see. So, like in the game yesterday, they put, you know, a blue sticker or a red sticker on you. You know, it might be positive or negative. Now, but the point of that game is, you don't see the sticker, right? So, from your point of view, you're not negative or positive. You're not, you're not anything. They are like a mirror for you, because if they make a face or if they smile, then you, you, you know which sticker I cannot see here, but... Yes, but I'm saying that you, uh, you take, uh, take on board the fact that they have your sticker. They see your face and you don't. Now, let, leave it with them. That's where it is. You've got my face now. I'm going to let you take care of my face. And the mirror, you see, and my own you know, thoughts about it. But here, I have no face. I'm not in any group. I'm not good or bad. This is freedom. You see, even while, you see, uh, other people are reflecting bad, negative things. If you live, uh, you know, hoping everybody's going to like you, you you'll, you'll never do it. Yeah. If impatience arises, yeah. how does it, uh, I mean, I'm trying to practice it. Uh, it uh, yes, well, what, what you know, we'll, we'll would do be nice to, to move on from that. Yeah, we'll go through that again. We did something yesterday with eyes closed, but we'll go more into that today. But uh, just as my face appears in your emptiness, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't try and get rid of my face, you place it, right? You see it's here and not there, okay? And then you look in the mirror and you take seriously what you see. You don't try and get rid of your face, you see where it is. It's here and not there. Mm -hmm. It's the placing of it that is the freedom. It's, you see, we'll, we'll go into this in a minute. But it's the same with feelings, and including impatience. When the impatience comes up, notice it's coming up in the space, you see. It does not affect the space, not central. It's there, you see. So, it, you, uh, you, uh, I suggest, don't try and get rid of it, because that strengthens it, you see. Just observe it from the nothing. And as you observe it, you'll see that it's changing. If you try and change it, you solidify it. So uh, one half, this is accept the things you can, you know, try, change the things you can change, accept the things you can't, and know the difference. Know the difference. Yeah. So, okay. so it helped to make like a pose, right? What were you, what you're saying? I mean, if you are connected with the emptiness, with the void, yeah, it helps you for a second to stop, to 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 pose, or right? It's yes, yeah, that's right. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the, the emptiness is completely stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it's the definition of stop. Mm. <laughs> it goes nowhere. And now, stop more than that. Yeah, that's right. Yes. It, it's, yes. Um, I, I, I want to say something about uh, what you said about people criticizing and all that. Uh, Darius used to give workshops and he was more than, at the time when I knew him, more than 80 years old. So we would say, you know, this uh, old face with uh, uh, white hair and wrinkles, this old Douglas face, well, that's your problem. I don't have it here. Yes. You deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I much prefer to have Lev's face than mine. <laughs> right, so... Uh, we're going to do a bit more with the mirror because it, it's just uh, really useful. But I just want to, uh, this is the stages just to have them here so it's obvious. Okay. Right, so uh, this is particularly clear with the mirror. So I want you to look in the mirror again. So we'll, we will have a short break in the morning before lunch. Yeah. All right. So you, this is so uh, vivid, really. And uh, when you uh, imagine, you go do a bit of imagination. Here you're a baby, and you look in the mirror, and it, you know, if you see a baby or an infant, it's out there. 
A lot of research done on this. You, you, you're not thinking it's at the near end of your arm. And babies will, you know, the, the infants will look round the back, you know, and, and touch it, you see, because they, it's really out there. <laughs> so the, the first stage, you look, and, and there's another baby, I suppose, but down at the, down out there. Now, what mum and dad and everyone teach you to do is to put that face on at the near end, like putting on a mask. And here's the tricks that you were taught to pay, play um, when you were very, very young. And the first one is you've got to imagine, and I'd like you to do this, imagine reaching into the mirror and getting hold of that face, you see, and pulling it out, because you've got to get it from there to here. It's in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah? It's in the wrong place. Now, it's also the wrong way round. Isn't it? It's the wrong way round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've got to act, sort of imagine it like a rubber mask and flip it. It's not turning it, it's flipping uh -huh. it because left is right? Yeah. Alright, so this is the trick. You look in, this is the, what you're taught. You've got, it's in the wrong place, so you've got to bring it out, sort of up your arm. And on the way up, you've got to flip it the other way around. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, so your nose is facing the other way. Mm -hmm. right? Which is imagination, because you, you can't do it. And also, if you measure it, if you measure it, it's very small. Yes. So you've got to stretch it. That's right. You've got to stretch it. So it's, I don't know how, you know, it's got to be bigger. Right? So, and so imagine that you've got to bring it up your arm, flip it the other way around and make it bigger and put it on. You see, put it on. Now that's what mum and dad are saying. You, you look in the mirror and they tell you that that is here. Now you can't see it here. But you've got to go through those tricks and uh, you know, work out which side your parting is, you know? Because if it's on that side, on their right, it's on my left. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, not only that, but it feels, it doesn't feel right. right? <laughs> and this one, this is, is soft and warm, <laughs> and that's, you know, <coughs> right? So what you do is, you see, if you put your mirror down and you're aware of the sensation of your mouth. Right? Now imagine you're a baby. You're aware of the sensation of your mouth. Do you have any idea yet what shape that is? No. Or what colour it is? Or how big it is? I mean, it could be as wide as the room. Because <laughs> you would be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't you? <laughs> See, right now, if I go, oh my God, your mouth has just gone as wide as the room. <laughs> you go, is it? <laughs> right? See, you can't tell. <laughs> And you have to uh, locate where your mouth is, because you can't see it. So there are all these little, you know, nursery rhymes, or uh, they say, you know, the aeroplane's coming into the hangar, it's coming in, it's coming in, it's coming, whoa, whoa, where is it, where's the hangar there? So you have, to, you have to sort of learn to imagine where your mouth is, because you can't see it. See, you know, the, can I have an ice cream? Yes, here it is, you see. <laughs> You've seen it, haven't you? You know, because you have to learn where, where, where your mouth is, you see, which is this, is mapping. Now, you've got the sensation of your mouth, but no image, right? Mm -hmm. And you look in the mirror and you've got the image, but no sensation, right? <laughs> so you've got to marry the image to the sensation. So look in the mirror, you see, and look at your mouth, and be aware of the sensation here of your mouth, so you've got to import that image. You've got to imagine that image there in your mouth on, your sen on the sensation the other way, and a bit bigger, but not too big. <laughs> <laughs> now put the, put the mirror down. Now you have done that so well, you've got a very good idea of where your mouth is, how big it is, right? or where your forehead is, or where the back of your head is, because you spend a lot of time learning that. 
and you've learned it so well, you can do it without the mirror, right? You see. But you've learned it so well, you think it's actually here. Whereas all the time, you're going out, using others as a mirror, right? You see. Now this is empathy. This is the where empathy comes from. It's very, I find it very interesting, you see. Because if you look, if you're a baby and you look out at others, you have not yet learned uh, that their mouths feel. They're just coloured shapes, right? You've got your sensation and you have no image yet. Mm -hmm. And you look in the mirror, image and no sensation. You look at someone else, image and no sensation, right? <coughs> now, when you learn to put the image on the sensation... So that now you know, when you smile, what that looks like, which you can't see, right? Because you've spent hours looking in the mirror, practicing your smile. <laughs> Who has not done that? <laughs> right. but, um, you know, uh, learning your appearance so that you can communicate. You see. So you now know what your smile looks like and how it feels. So now when you look at someone else smiling, you know what it feels like. Right? Empathy. This is how empathy grows, through the mirror and through feedback. You see. So now you know that uh, when you put your hand on your knee, you get a sensation. Right? Now when you see someone else do that, you almost feel it. Because you've learned to marry the image and the sensation. So this, you know, when you feel sad, you've learned what that looks like. You see, and in photographs, you know, and, and feedback. In movies. Now, what? In, in the movies. In the movies, yes, that's right. That's what we love movies. Yes. And then you practice feeling sad. You see, you just, like, yeah, you, you like just James Dean, you know, <laughs> Matt Damon, you know, or whoever, you see. And then when you look at someone else, you, you're reading everybody all the time, right? I mean, all the time now, you're looking around and you're, you know, a happy face, a sad face, a puzzled face, a critical face, an accepting face, you see? And they change us so quickly. Well, this is... You've learned to do that. It's easy. And uh, I don't know much about autism, you see, but a part of that is the inability to read others. Right. You see. There you go. Empathy, inability to empathize because they haven't got their own face on. Mm -hmm. So this second stage of the child and into the adult is vital for empathy. You have to learn to put your face on. See, you only have to look at me and you, you're reading me all the time, aren't you? And it's not just my face, it's my body, language, you see, because you know what it feels like to, you know, you, this, and then you look at someone else and you, you, all the time. This is going on, kind of, almost non-verbally, all the time, you see, you you yeah. The other side of the coin is that uh, we're, we're living in a virtual world 24-7. Yeah. Virtual world, it's virtual. Yeah. It's just but this is the world. You see, because yeah, no, it, unless you do this, yeah. there isn't a world. Yeah, no, <laughs> what you said just now is really, yeah. 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 Th this is how you discover others. Yeah. Because before you do this, you, you don't have the f understanding that others are thinking and feeling. Yeah. Because you've got, you, yes, what's your thought? Sorry, um, so empathy, if I understood correctly, is the... <coughs> Putting an, an, an image on a sensation. You do that for yourself, right? I'm sorry, I'm and sorry. then you apply it to the others. It goes together, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I need that to communicate with others, right? Yes. So they see to make. So they don't see the void. They yes. see yes. my specific feeling. Yes. Right? And now you understand that. Yeah. You see, and you see it's. Uh, for example, you're aware now of your thoughts. I mean, imagine a blue circle, right? Now, you are taught that the blue circle is in your head, mm -hmm. right? right? Because others can't see it. So it's hidden, 
Right? So you understand now, from the feedback, that they can't see your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Which is a really vital stage in development when the child realizes that he or she can tell a secret. Yeah. Can keep a secret or tell a lie. This is a really positive development when your child lies. Because it means that they realize they're separate. That, that you can't see their thoughts and they can hide their thoughts and feelings from you. Now, when, when they have learned that, which in very simple terms is, my thoughts are in my head, which you can't see inside, right? As soon as I accept that, I must accept that inside those heads are thoughts that I can't see, right? Empathy, you see. You see, I, you are out, you're completely accepting that I am over here thinking. But can you see my thoughts? No, no, no. But this is, you can see how... Putting your face on is the, uh, is the recognition that there are others. Mm -hmm. It's a very deep thing. Mm -hmm. Putting your face... When I put a face on this consciousness, I put a consciousness behind that face. To put it simply. When I put a face on this consciousness, imagine one on this consciousness, which I get from here, then I now imagine a consciousness... There's someone up. <laughs> Maybe it's nobody. <laughs> yeah, well, we will see. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck for them. Okay. There is, um, I think, an additional step that for the empathy that your heart reacts to, to the feeling you, you're seeing on some... Yes, yeah, all of this. All of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a continual feed loop, you know, feedback loop. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. So when... It seems like there is a kind of way you say... Um, there is a good way for the uh, cooking phase. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a... I, I don't want to say a bad side, but there is a side that affects us in a, in a wrong way. So, when do you, uh, like, what is the uh, connection? Okay, so, uh, obviously, you, in order to understand others, you have to put your face on, right? Mm -hmm. When I put my face on my consciousness, I get a consciousness of your faces. And this is the basis of society. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, you know, you you can't function if you do that. Uh, it's absolutely vital, and uh, it's, uh, you don't want to stop this happening in this development. And uh, I have a friend in Holland, and her mother was part of a non-dual group. And she taught her child not to use the word I, because I doesn't exist. It was so confusing. And it was only when she met me and I explained that you have to have an I, mm -hmm. and it's all right, that she moved out of that confusion. So, uh, but you can see that as vital as this is, uh, a hugely positive, absolutely uh, the basis of society in terms of self and other. The, what the downside is, is this one you realize is separate mm -hmm. and is alone and will die and gets ill and doesn't know everything and is at risk and you feel vulnerable and frightened and not enough and okay, so uh, there's good and bad in that. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now, we, we normally, uh, we think that's the end of the story. Can you <coughs> a bit about why it's so bad? Uh, well, it's bad in the sense that to now be completely convinced that I am in this body here, and you're in that body there, you see, uh, that I am only this, mm -hmm. you see, and everything else is not me, mm -hmm. then I am uh, very vulnerable. And, uh, you know, this, this is vulnerable. You might get knocked down by a car, or you might die, or you might... Well, you will die, right? <laughs> and you'll get ill, and uh, you'll have an argument with someone, and things don't go your way. 
So in that way, and you are isolated too. Pardon? You are I isolated. 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 Yes, you are. You see, mm -hmm. this is the nature of it. Yeah. Now, there's good things to that, but it's also uh, you're mortal. So in that way, uh, they say that uh, you know the deepest fear we have is of death. You see, and we're trying to do our best to avoid that all the time. But you see how it drives us. The spirit drives us. So uh, now, um, what we're you see what this the third stage is you really put this on here, mm -hmm. right? That you're always looking out to nothing, mm -hmm. right? You can see that. Check it out now. You're, it's never been any other way than looking out of nothing. But now, through others and the mirror, you're putting on your face all the time. You see, and imagining what it's like the other, you know, very deeply. So the third stage is, is uh, the first stage is this one without this, the baby. The child, second stage, is you're beginning to put this one on, right? But you're not quite sure, you know, I think these are wings. <laughs> this sensation, you see, you can see how children do it. You're doing this and you've got a sensation and you can't see it. And it could be wings, right? You see? Or you're looking ahead, you see, and these could be wheels for the, for the train. You see? And so that's why it's so playful and flexible and creative and when you're a child, because you haven't yet completely convinced yourself that these are arms and not wings, you see. Or the, the, this is, these are legs and not a, a fish's tail. You see. Hmm. So, um, but um, mum and dad and everyone keep reminding you this is this is here and not the bird. You see, and this is, and so now uh, you, you, you don't even think about that. You just you you are acting as if you have a face and you're in a body and you're separate. Now, the next stage here is what we're doing here in this workshop is taking a fresh look for ourselves. Because all that has really been come from outside in a way, hasn't it? Mm. You know, the, the, it's, it's society telling you you've got a face on and you're behind a face and you're in a body. And the others are in the same condition. You see. Uh, so, um, so far at least, society has not admitted, uh, not... Uh, validate this. But now what we're doing, you see, I mean, just take this, you see, and look at down the your arm. Now, hold the, the mirror out so it's in bottom right by your hand. Now, all we're doing now is saying on present evidence, from your point of view, which end of your arm is your, is your face? Well, it's there, right? Notice at the near end, there's no face. To make it really obvious, because we need a bit of a, you know, help here, look at the hole in the car. See, now, as you bring it on like a mask, let your attention travel back towards the place you're looking out of with the card, you see, until it, you bring it right back and no card at zero, this open space. Now, there's something fantastic that comes out of this, in my view, is when you get to this one, you see, and you are conscious now of your own point of view, which is you're headless, you're not behind a face, your consciousness is not behind a face. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's big, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Everything's in it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You see. And you're, get, you're doing this by attention, attention. And your, the sensations of your arms behind your back could be wings. <laughs> you know, they're all fins or nothing at all or what, right? You see. So your, this, the access to your, what we call our true nature is through attention, not through learning. Right? It's through attention. But now, when you uh, are aware of this right now, aren't you still acting as if I'm over here with thoughts in my head, in a way? You know, I mean, 
So you don't. And, and this is, uh, you know, and, and you're reading people as if, you know, are they criticizing me or not? You see, all that's still going on yeah. because you've spent your whole life learning that and acting as if that's true. That is not going to go. See, but actually, it's a, it's a, a very positive thing mm -hmm. because you see, when you now look and see that you've no face and uh, you are open space full of everything, but you still are reading people. Hang on a minute, <coughs> finish my thought. So you know that others see your face with the baby didn't, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you now know that for you, you're open space, but for others, you're a person. Understood? Yes. yes. Right. So now, when you look at others, you see that they are a person, but you know now that for themselves, they're open space, right? Right. Mm -hmm. This is empathy. Oh, great. Right? This is really, this is taking empathy to another level. Because now you uh, uh, accept. Not only has that person got sensations there, right? But you now know that those sensations are not in the face for them. They're in the open space, right? Yes. It's very free, you see. And you know now that those, those people there, you accept. I can't see that you're thinking. I accept your thinking, because I've learned that, right? But now, because I see that my thoughts are happening in the space and not in my head, I now accept that your thoughts are happening in the space there, right? When are we going, are we going to teach the children this? What age? Not to no, that's a good point. Yeah. Yes, well, two things about that is that, uh, like my friend who was taught not to say I, it's damaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really have to go through this to understand others as well as yourself, right? Yeah. So please don't start teaching this, you know. <laughs> but the thing is that if, as you can see, uh, as you can sort of um, be aware of, if you are aware of this like you are now, you see, you it changes the way you are, right? Yes. And you broadcast that, right? Yes. It's in some way. It's, I mean, you, when you're with another and you're seeing that you're open for them, they're going to feel it, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. And underneath, really, it's deep acceptance of the other as they are, isn't it? Because nothing doesn't change somehow. Yes. All right. So if you are being it with your child, that's the main thing, not to talk about it, unless they say, Mummy, why can't I see my head? You see, or, Mummy, I can't see my head. Oh, nor can I. I can't see mine, you see. So you don't suppress it. You don't say, that's silly, of course you've got a head. Right? <laughs> or you don't have. What? Or I will not say you don't have. Uh, well, you see... No, you can't I, see. You're, you're just saying, I, I can't see. Yeah, you, you play with it light, you see. But you're not suppressing that if they bring it up. But you're not introducing it. Because they are in the business of getting their head on, you see. And they probably don't really want to know about no head. They will not sleep at night. Yeah, actually... If I would summarize what we were talking about or what we've seen before, it actually is at, at the development of human being. Yeah. Because the baby sees my face from close and so on and so on until until we're here. So, uh, but but that's the way it is. I mean, uh, I I don't see anything new in it. I mean that. I, that we were talking about, we knew that the baby can't uh, look around and just see the face and the child, they, you know, he, and so and so on. So actually I, I'm trying to, to look at what we were talking about, but for me it's quite obvious yeah. that, that the development of human beings. Yeah, not the first stage. 
No, this stage of the sea. No, the, this no, whole this stage is not admitted. Yeah, a dark, a dark also. I mean, I can see somebody's face, and 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 they really. All we were talking about, for me, it's quite obvious that, that what is happening. It's very mm -hmm. obvious. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. So yes. all, all I can hey, say I'm, now, I'm selling water by the river. <laughs> But, you see, <laughs> yeah. normally the way of thinking about it is that I can't see my face, but I have one. Yeah. Okay. But I'm saying, I can't see my face, I have one, but you have it. Yes. It's not here. Yeah. Okay, that's different from what society says. Society says, Richard, you can't see your face, but you're, you have it, you're behind it, you're in that body. Right. And I'm saying, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the body. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I'm not in a body. I never was in this body. It's brilliant. <laughs> so that's different, you see. I'm not, I'm looking out of open space. I really am. It's not, I just can't see my head. I really am looking out of open space. I am this space, full of the world. I am it, you see. And the more you go on, the more you take seriously your own point of view, your own experience. You accept others, but it's from over there, you see. And it's not just, I just can't see my body here, but I'm really in it. I say, I can't see it, and I'm not. And my body's out there in the mirror. At this range, it's a human one. But I've got a planetary body. I really do. You see, it's so deep. Uh, I've got a planetary body. And you can see it if you want. Just go to the moon. You see, oh, we've got lots of pictures, self-portraits of me as a planet all around the world now, you see. Uh, and uh, I, you know, the more you go on and take seriously the fact that you really are this no-thing at centre, and it's real, the more you realise how different that is, you see, and who you really are. It's not, I'm not a human being here, I'm the one. Yes. The fourth stage is a deprogramming. The fourth stage is so different, and yet you yes. can see it's a natural development. Yes. 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 You see, and I say that this is a bit like you know the, the seed sprouts and it grows, and then it forms a rosebud, and then it opens. And this is where the rosebud is, and this is it opening. Most people today are rosebuds that have not opened. Mm -hmm. You see, but you can, you don't, you don't have to, you know, you don't. A rosebud opening is a natural development, and so is seeing who you really are. It's absolutely natural. And if you do not get to this fourth stage of the seer, you are, uh, your development is not complete. You just say that, oh, I'm very sorry, you haven't, you haven't fully developed yet. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this is absolutely natural. And you've sort of got to, you know, make an effort to stop it happening. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if, you, if you don't want a rosebud to open, you've got to stop it, you know. But if you let it be, it will open. And that's the same with this, and that's the same with that. It's so optimistic. You see, we're all seeing it now, <coughs> We're reacting differently, we're understanding it differently. But we're all seeing, we're the rosebud that's opened here, you see. And, but at the end, if I'm everywhere, okay. if I'm everywhere, yeah. I'm also inside. Yes. So, first I have to say I'm not. But after I, I understand that what it's not that? only this, I'm also here, but it doesn't find me. Well, lovely. Yes, I understand. You see, so there's a thousand different ways of thinking about this, yeah. you see. And so there isn't... No, uh, actually, that's wrong. That's not like that, you see. You, you become your own authority. And you, I'm only expressing my point of view here. I mean, it's based on evidence, you see, and research. Uh, but really, the bottom line is I appeal to your direct experience. See, and that's the power of this is what you're looking out of. And the, I mean, point again, it, you know, it, 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 it is that simple and that non-verbal. 
And we can get into a lot of ideas which I love. But uh, we, every so often you have to come back to the non way and start again. You see, and you see, ah, you can't half see the nothing, can you? Can you half see it? You know, you can't see the top left corner as opposed to the bottom right corner, you know. And you can't see it a bit blurry and then a bit clearer. You see, because it's nothing. You see. And it, it's not dependent on how you feel. It's not dependent on what others think of you. It's not dependent on how much you earn or whether you meditated or, you know. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Now, you see, if you... It, it's really powerful to actually admit in public because so far in public all we admit is the third stage. That I'm behind a face... And you're behind the, you know, your my consciousness is behind the face, and your face hides the consciousness. That's what we admit in public. But now we admit in public this, right? Do we? Yes. You see. <laughs> now this is where you get. You saw yesterday in the game the power of social pressure, where people thought they were sure they were in a group, and then everyone went like that, and it rocks the boat, and they move. That's social pressure, right? If enough people tell you something about you, it's very difficult to resist it, right? Yeah. You know, there's a, in, in England, we had this, you know, you've been framed or something, this, this uh, program where they uh, fool people. And what they did was um, these friends, so-called friends of this guy, uh, they, they said, oh... Um, that he thought he was going for a job interview. You see, they set it up. And they got him a black taxi and they, they took him to this theatre. And he was led into the theatre. And then, and there were uh, four or five women in long robes, you see. And there was a, a throne, a big chair, you see, on the stage. And he, didn't, he thought it was a job interview. And they took him in and they led him up and they put him on the chair... And they bowed down at his feet and said, you're the one. You've come. Oh, you've come. And he's a bit confused. And they pull aside a, a curtain and there's a picture of him on the throne. And he said, look, we've been waiting for you. you see. And the, 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 the tradition was he would arrive in a black chariot. How did you arrive? He came in a black taxi. There it is. And you know, it was shocking. After just a few minutes, he, he took it on board. <laughs> he started to become the one, huh? Yeah. Oh, no. it, it was shocking <laughs> and embarrassing, you know, because he, he you know, right, okay. I, I, I <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know. And when it was revealed to him, it was a, a prank, you know, a joke. It was so embarrassing. And it was rather a cruel thing to do, in a way. Yeah. 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 But you know, that's this power of social pressure, right? You see? So everybody here is, is saying, you're not the one. You're not the one. You're just the one in the mirror. You're not the one. It's very hard to resist, isn't it? You're be the terrible twos, you've heard of the terrible twos when you're two years old? Yeah. That is your fury mm -hmm. that you're being told you're little and you're not big. And you're not the centre of the world, you see. It's your fury. But you have to... Uh, you know, I mean, deep in our hearts, we know we're special. But no one else does, you see. So, social pressure. And you, as you grow up, you shrink. And you accept your limitations, more or less. Teenagers are angry because they... This has been stolen. Feels like you've lost something, you know. So the power of social pressure, social pressure conditioning cuts us down to size, you see. Now when we act, say in public, and act, you know, act in public, and admit in public, that as well as being this one, we're this one, right? You see? And if, you know, in this room, the general atmosphere now is, <coughs> okay, right? You know, I mean, a few questions and doubts and stuff and, but generally I would say you know, yeah okay I, I see what you mean yeah and we start to hear others saying yes 
the social pressure changes, do you see? You say, oh, <coughs> it's okay to be both. You say, well, I'm not, the, we're not saying, you, now you stop being this, you can't. And that's wonderful, that's good. But now you reawaken and bring this into your life and see it works better. And it's true, it's true. You see? So that is what... Yesterday, and we'll do a bit more today, where I got you to communicate to each other this non verbal experience of who we are. And that is bringing onto the front burner, into the group, this acceptance and admission in public and this celebration in public of who you are and who I am, right? Yes. I think this gentleman. From your experience, let's say somebody insults you, okay, yeah. and you have your reaction. How do you apply that, what we are practicing here? Yes. And how does it work? Yes, well, it works by, uh, you see, that I experience my reaction, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You see? But I'm now seeing that that reaction is not in a box here. It's in the space. You see? Mm -hmm. It's happening in the space. Yes. See, because of this consciousness is no face. And these feelings are coming up, but they're not in a box here. Yes. They're, they're coming up in the... It's like they're coming up in the roof. So that means that I, if I am... And I have to attend. This is not primarily a thought. This is attention in meditation. And when something is strong like that, when it's a, a powerful criticism, which hurts, you know, which gets through, then you... Then, uh, one has to attend moment by moment. You know, it's not something you can just brush off. You, so just as I am now attending to the fact that it's face to no face, so I attend to the fact that it's feelings to no feelings. You see. And they're ha happening in this space, and they don't hurt the space. And I'm free at centre, even while I'm feeling hurt there. Now this uh, is therapeutic. You see. So it's again this two-way... Uh, application of this two-way attention. Yeah. So, okay. so you can I feel the hurt, yeah, and in the same time feel the space. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I know that. Can we have a coffee break? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay.